Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can adjust keyframes in DaVinci Resolve 15 by adding in ease curves and moving keyframes to different parts of the timeline. So if you don't already know, keyframing is a really powerful tool inside of DaVinci Resolve where you can basically create animations with your video clips, audio, or images that you might bring in as an overlay. And when you set a keyframe, you're basically telling Resolve that a setting such as zoom, position, or rotation should be a certain value at a specific time in the timeline. And then by setting up another keyframe, you can have it animate between those two points, such as having the zoom go from 0.5 to 1 over a few seconds. So usually you would do this very simply by opening up the inspector with your video clip selected, setting one keyframe by clicking on these diamond symbols over here to the right. So let's say I start with a zoom of one, and then I go to where I want the second keyframe to be in the timeline. If you actually change the value, it will automatically set up the second keyframe if you already have one. So I'll just set that second keyframe by changing the value to, I don't know, let's just make it like 0.04. So it's taking the original video clip and making it zoom out over a few seconds. So if I go and play this back, it'll look something like this, where once the keyframe hits, it zooms out at a steady pace until it gets to its really small size. So just with those two keyframes, you can have the basis of a decent transition inside of DaVinci Resolve. But after setting the keyframes, we may decide that we want to edit them. So we can obviously go to the keyframes and click on the red diamond to unmark the keyframe and just remove it. And then you can click on the left and right arrows that will pop up as you add keyframes to go between those keyframes. And you can change the settings on those keyframes, either by removing it, clicking the red button, or changing the value at that keyframe point, which will adjust the keyframe value. But now I want to show you a couple other ways we can adjust these keyframes. So one is going to be to move the keyframe on the timeline. So if you look at your video clip and you look at the bottom right of the video section, you'll notice that there is a little keyframe diamond down here. If you click that, it'll actually pop open another section for your video timeline for each of the settings where you have a keyframe set. So we can see here we have the transform box here. And under the transform section, we're adjusting the zoom. So when we actually click on these keyframes down here, the little diamonds, they'll turn red and we can drag those and adjust their timing on the video timeline. So by moving it a second further and playing it back, what's going to happen is that that video transition is going to be a lot slower now. So if I play that back one more time with the rendering done, uh, you can see that it still zooms out, but it's much, much slower. And this is much easier than going into the inspector and clicking on the red button in order to remove a keyframe and then dragging to a new part of the timeline and resetting that value. And so I could type in 0.04 here and by removing and re-adding the keyframe, we can get the same result, but by just dragging the keyframe to where we want it to be, it saves us that extra step. So now with this simple zoom out transition, one thing you'll probably notice quite obviously is that it has a constant speed. During the transition, the zoom out occurs at a linear consistent speed. But one way we can make that a little bit more interesting is to add what's called an ease curve into that transition. So in order to adjust curves, there is a second icon right next to the keyframing icon in the video timeline. If we click that for our video clip, it's gonna open up this section where we can see the curves of our transition. Now, in most cases, you'll need to drag this way out in order to see what's actually going on here. You can also scroll down and then you'll be able to see the transitions for your different keyframed properties. So in this case, we still have zoom X and you can see that it has a linear zoom out. So this line consistently goes down at the same speed, which gives us that consistent speed in the actual animation. So in order to take these points and to set an ease curve, the easiest way is to click on these icons that are kind of in the center. And when we click on one of these, it's going to give us a curved animation. So when we have a curve added, it's not going to be zooming out at the same speed, but rather it might be slower at the start and faster at the end or faster at the start and slower at the end. Or it could be really fast at the beginning and the end, but slow in the middle. You can also create your own custom curves here by adjusting the curve handles, as we'll see in a minute. And it will really allow you to go between two keyframes in whatever manner you want. You can get quite crazy with it. So with this left curve, what's going to happen is that you can see it's kind of flat here as it starts, but then as it gets towards the bottom, it gets a little bit faster. So as there's a lot of change vertically 
in our curves, that's going to mean that the value of the zoom is going to change a lot in a short period of time. But wherever it's very horizontal and flat, that means that it's going to be moving slow for that period of time. So this is an ease curve n where it eases in slowly at the start and it completes the majority of the animation towards the end. So slow start, fast end. And if we play this back, you'll see what I mean. So as it starts, it's very slow, but as it gets towards the end, the zoom out gets faster and faster. Okay, also note that you can add keyframes inside of this curve section by finding where you want to set the keyframe and then clicking over here on the keyframe button. So just like up here in the inspector, clicking that adds a new keyframe. So we can see so we can see that there's two keyframes here and that currently they're set to the same value. So 80 so 0 0.04 zoom at the start and 0 0.04 zoom at the end means there's no actual animation between those keyframes. Points. But just like I can set the value for this new keyframe in the inspector, I can also set the value by dragging this up. So I can have it zoom in even past the 1.0 point if I want it to zoom in further than the base shot. And I can uh, set that to whatever value I want there. And there's no curve between these two points. So once again, it's a linear transition. But if I want to take these three keyframes and have it animate in a way where it's very fast when it gets to this middle keyframe, but then on the outer edges, the left and the right keyframes, uh, it's going to have that ease in and ease out effect. So I can do that by clicking on two of these keyframes. So I'm using shift and then left clicking. You can tell it's selected because it's red. And then you hit the middle keyframe button. And what that'll do is it'll take these keyframe points and make it ease in, but have a fast out and then a fast out in on the right hand side of this middle point but then it eases out and this will give us kind of a smoother effect so i'll play this and it'll have a smooth fade in and then when it gets to the middle part it's kind of fast and it's slow on the way out now obviously if i don't like that i can left click and hold shift while clicking on these three points and then just make it go back to a linear curve by clicking on the right option there and then we have the consistent speed once again. But you can see, in a way, that kind of looks a little bit more boring. And maybe when you want it to get to that center point, it looks bad if it just sharply reverses direction. So now if you want to get quite crazy with it, though, um, let's try clicking on this right keyframe point, And I'll add a ease out curve there. So once again, uh, fast towards the middle keyframe point and then slow on the outer side. But you'll notice that there's a blue handle with a blue dot here. We can actually click on these handles if we want to adjust the curve. Um, and in addition to that, you can always add in more keyframe points if you want things to get even more crazy. And you can take the values and make them do all kinds of things here. So uh, whenever you want to add one of those curve handles on though, make sure that you convert the straight line to a curve by uh, selecting the keyframe point and then adding a curve in. So I can add a ease right curve by clicking there. And then I can take these handles and make the values go kind of crazy. So with the curve set up in this way, it's going to zoom in, then zoom out a little bit, and then zoom in and way out again, but using an ease curve so that the speed isn't consistent. And that's basically how you can add in your ease curves to any adjustable property, any property you want to keyframe inside of DaVinci Resolve. And just a reminder, with any of these keyframes, if you want to adjust their position in the timeline, meaning the time of those keyframes being set, just left click and drag them left and right, and that will adjust their timing. If you drag them up or down, that will be adjusting the value. So using the keyframe adjuster and the curve adjuster, you should be able to fine tune your keyframed animations to get them to look pretty much exactly how you want them to look without too much effort. So that's gonna be it for this video on how you can move keyframes inside of the timeline and and also how you can add and adjust curves inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.